All right, so we are in the edit bay today talking about the magic of multicams. And I wanna show you how I use multicams in the context of my YouTube videos so you can see how they might apply to your own content creation. Now, I don't only use multicams for the A roll in my YouTube videos. I also use multicams when I'm editing corporate video content that is interview based. Obviously, if we're shooting an interview with two to three camera angles, we're gonna use multi-cams to edit those interviews. But on the occasion where I shoot those interviews with a single camera, I still use multi-cams. Now this could just be a tutorial showing you how to do that, but I also wanna talk a lot about the why we use multi-cams in certain situations. Now this video is sponsored. It's sponsored by Boris FX. So in a little bit, we'll take a closer look at some of the offerings Boris FX has and how they relate to using multi-cams as well. So make sure you stick around for that. All righty, multi-cam time. So here we're looking at a recent video of mine. This is an AirPods Pro 2 review that I did. And I, of course, used multi-cams in building this video. You can see here, we've got my A-roll, which is me just talking to camera. That's what I call A-roll. And if I double click, I can go inside the multi-cam and you can see how I have these angles broken down. So we can see here, we've got sort of my wide angle, which is the angle I set up with my Canon C300 Mark II. And then we have a closer angle where we punch in. And the multi-cam allows me in the edit to alternate back and forth between a close angle and the wide angle. And you can see here, we've got a nice little run of three clips, wide, close, wide. And it's a really great way to be able to switch back and forth between those two angles. A second angle, which again, I created out of the main angle here. I just zoomed in a little bit, kind of rescaled it and sized it so that I could have a second angle and make my video a little bit more engaging visually by cutting back and forth between those angles. So why do we do this? I can show you how to set up a multi-cam and go through all that stuff. I've done that in a few other videos, which I'll link down in the description. But why do we do this? The big reason why why we do this, of course, is to make our videos more interesting visually by cutting back and forth between two angles. You wanna have that wide angle and a tight angle. So what I see a lot of people doing is they're stacking angles in their timeline. They have this here, which is a wide angle, and then they have a second angle underneath it, which is a little bit tighter. And they'll go like this, they'll blade, and then they'll go here, blade, and then they'll deactivate this angle to make this the active angle. And then they'll go back to this angle, They'll go here, they'll blade it, they'll blade here, deactivate this one so that this one is the visible angle. And this is what they'll do through their whole edit to alternate back and forth between a wide shot and a more medium shot, even though they're still using jump cuts. And to me, this is just really inefficient and clunky. I wouldn't recommend this. It's very time consuming and it's like you're manually doing a multi-cam edit. So why not just use multi-cams in the first place? Obviously, if you don't know what a multi-cam is or you've never been introduced to that as you've taught yourself Final Cut Pro, I get it. But this is what this video is for to show you the magic of multi-cams. So the real beauty of a multi-cam is being able to add an effect in inside the multi-cam and have it ripple effect throughout your entire edit. Let's add a really crazy effect to my video so you can see what I'm talking about. If I double click on this, I'm over here in the Boris effects, stylize effects. We've got a prism effect and a video glitch effect. I'm gonna mess around with the prism effect to show you how adding this effect will ripple through your whole edit when you add it inside of a multi-cam. So let's go ahead and add this here. And then let's get crazy with this in the FX editor and really do something nuts with it like this, okay? Now I would never do this normally in a YouTube video, but I just wanna show you something dramatic visually that lets you understand how multicams can really help you in your editing workflow. So let's go ahead and copy that and then paste it to these other clips, deselect the ones that we don't wanna paste over, and then go ahead and hit paste. And when we come back out of the video, you're gonna see this effect has been applied across the entire video. That's the beauty of the multi-cam. Now, again, we don't want this effect in this video, but I wanted to put something in there that was really kind of visually crazy to see how it updates throughout your entire video. So again, if you're someone that has been taking this effect, dragging it to your clip, right? then making your adjustments in the FX editor like this does in Boris FX and then picking this crazy one, hitting save. And then of course it's not on the rest of your clips, but you need to get it on the rest of your clips. So then you select this, you hit copy, and then you start selecting all these other clips in your edit. You're going through all of these, trying to select them all. 
You can't easily lasso them because you've got all these other clips in here. So you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. Let's get it on here. We got to get it on all these here. Got to get it on these. I got to add it to all these. Oh, this is just taking forever. I wish there was a way to be able to do this faster. Oh, so we got to go here. Got to go all these. We have to deselect these because we don't want it on our audio clip. And then we got to select all these. And then we have to hit Command Shift V, deselect audio, and then paste it. And then and only then is it applied to the entirety of our edit. This is why multicams are so magical. Instead of doing that, just go inside the multicam, apply the effect to all of your angles and then see it reflected throughout your entire edit. Avoid all of this painful, painstaking process of selecting all the other clips in your timeline to be able to apply an updated effect or updating your color grade, whatever it is that you're doing. So definitely embrace the multicam. It's magical, especially in the context of a YouTube video, and it will save you a ton of time in your workflow. And that's especially true when you're trying to stylize your footage. And that brings us to the sponsor of today's video, Boris Effects. They have an amazing stylized unit with nine curated effects that include over 950 professionally designed presets. So let's talk about how adding some of these stylized effects from Boris Effects pertains to an edit like this. Now, Back in the day, I used to edit concert video content for acts like trans Orchestra, New Kids on the Block, Ariana Grande, Gwen Stefani, and even J-Lo. And we would create content like this that would play on the screens during their live concert performance. But we would need to do stuff to really stylize this content and make it look less like a music video and more like what we called content-y, something that was kind of abstract and interesting to look at, but it wasn't something that necessarily made the audience stare at that screen. We wanted them to still stare at the artist, but take in the bigger show, the lights, the screens, all of that stuff. So I'm just using some stock footage here of this woman singing in front of these lights. We got the waves and the ocean. Uh, I don't really know what this means, but uh, it's something sort of similar to what we would have made for JLo or Gwen Stefani, let's say. Now I could do these effects on the top layer here, and let's just go through and take a look at some of them. Um, so we're looking at stylize. And we have a prism effect and a video glitch effect. You can kind of see a preview of it there. This looks really nice with this footage, this prism effect. So this is definitely something I would have used back in the day when I was creating this concert content. So to get this effect on all these other clips, I would have had to have selected all of these clips. Let's see, let's just go through them all and then double clicked on this and it would apply it to all of them. And you say to yourself, well, you know, that's it. We're, we're good to go, Matt. Why do we need to... Uh, do something fancy like incorporate a multicam workflow into this. So when I was editing content, we had to make sure that our content was really engaging visually. So you can see here, like these first two clips are both silhouette one, but they're diff a different look. She's actually kind of punched in compared to this first clip. And what I did was I built a multicam clip with a wide angle, and then we have a close up and an ECU so that when I go through and cut these clips up, I can cycle back and forth between those angles and use the multicam to basically create new shots out of existing ones. So we've got the wide, the medium, and then the tight. And if I'm doing custom music, it allows me to really hit to the beat and all that stuff and keep this visually dynamic. So when I want to make adjustments to the prism effect, it makes it difficult to have it on the top layer here across all of these clips, because then if I make an adjustment to this prism effect, I actually have to then remove it from all these other clips to then have the newly adjusted prism effect there properly. So I'm going to hit Command Shift X to remove effects. I'm going to take that prism off. Now I have to take this new adjusted prism effect and paste it onto all of these and select all of them. It's really uh, quite a bit of work to do that. So let's go back to square one and look at a different way of doing this. So I'm gonna go inside my multi-cam. So I'm only gonna add the prism effect to the first clip because I'm gonna make some adjustments to it that I'm then gonna paste to these other clips inside the multi-cam. Now the beauty of Boris Effects and their effects editor is that they give you a ton of controls. And this effects editor, which is way over here, really has some powerful looks. You have all of these different prism effects within here, and then you have all of these control parameters. 
You can also A, B, or do a kind of this wipe so you can see what it looks like before the effect and after the effect. Let's actually go to one that's a little bit more, uh, not as crazy. And you can see what it looks like before. I really love the FX editor and Boris effects for this. I really like this one. I think this one looks good. Soft Dreamweaver. So we're going to close out of here. And now that we have this, let's hit save. Now that we have this, let's go ahead and copy this to the other angles. So what this means now is if I start using these clips further down the edit, right? And I'm building this out. This is a five minute song. I've got all these clips repeating, stuff with the ocean repeating, all this different stuff. If I will go in and go, you know what? I want a different blend mode for this. I can double click, select this, hit the FX editor, and I can change the blend mode to something else. Let's just go with normal for this one. All right. Now I do have to apply these changes to these other clips. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the prism effect from these and then copy this one and paste it back over and then when i go back out of my edit all the changes i made are rippled through all of the multicam clips called silhouette one see this clip silhouette two this is a tighter angle of this shot if i go in and add the prism effect to all three of these and hit paste and then go back out it's now applied to all of these clips labeled Silhouette 2. So it's a really great way to use multicams with a plugin package like Boris FX's Stylize Unit to be able to make adjustments to different effects you put on inside your multicam clips so that they're then affected throughout your edit. The bonus of a multicam clip is you can create those fake angles, those alternate angles, and then switch back and forth between them. I really like using multicams because of that, and it's a workflow that works really great for concert video content and music videos. Now let's take a closer look at some of the amazing transitions you get with the transitions unit from Boris FX. So you've got lots of blur dissolves, shake dissolves, zoom dissolves. Let's see what that looks like. As we go through here, we'll just hit that and then hit create transition. We'll see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and select this and hit control R so we can render it. This is stuff that was a dream for, for me when I was in uh, content editing back in the day. Let's see what this one looks like. I'm going to select these and hit Control R to render them. And then let's play that back. Oh, that's really cool. And we would use transitions like this all the time for J-Lo, Gwen Stefani, because you want to make sure that, you know, if you're doing a song that just needs to kind of blend and flow together, maybe there's a different vibe to the music instead of having those hard cuts. Maybe things are more of a ballad, a little bit slowed down, and you want to just kind of melt between shots. Transitions like this are a really great way to be able to do that. Let's take a look at one more. We'll do a uh, video glitch dissolve, which is kind of a different vibe. And we'll select these and hit control R. Yeah, and I think that works really well with that other effect, right? The glitch effect from, from Boris FX. We can go inside the multicam and maybe let's add this glitch effect to this angle. So we'll copy and then paste. And then maybe all of these have the prism, but then this close up, these all have this uh, glitch effect on them. So when we play it back, we'll see that glitch effect doing its thing. Got a little composite job here with the ocean. I did a lot of that back in the day, doing a lot of compositing. And then these glitch effects, which again are all fully editable in the FX editor, tons of controls and different looks as far as glitch goes. You've got all these different uh, glitch effects, some that are really crazy with shake, others that are a little bit more subtle. So you really have a lot of options with these different glitch effects. And again, just some amazing tools over here to be able to control these. Now, some of the controls you can access in the inspector over here. So you can do some of this stuff without having to open up the effects editor, but the effects editor really gives you a good way to be able to check things out, especially like this. I love this AB where you can slide this across and see what your footage looks like before and after. So the stylize unit and the transitions unit from Boris FX give you some really great tools for enhancing your footage and adding effects to your videos. I've got a link in the description that will take you to each of those units. You can purchase them individually for $59 or you can subscribe to Continuum FCP for $25 per month or purchase an annual subscription for $195 and save a little bit on the monthly cost. 
I love that Boris Effects gives you the option to buy these units individually, or if you prefer a subscription, you can snag them with Continuum FCP. I'm also going to put a link down in the description to their effects called Looks, which there's like 80 effects presets and some transitions you can get, and that's totally free. And it also gets you access to being able to use Mocha to motion track different things in your footage. So I hope that gives you an idea of why multicams are a powerful and useful tool when editing in Final Cut Pro. Of course, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. I'm happy to elaborate on this process or show you other videos of mine that might give you more insight as to why I work on my videos this way. That's all I've got for this one. Until the next one. I'll see you all soon. Don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli.